Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at Nexilia, so it's actually Nexl AI. However, this is a new Casper fork, so we've seen a bunch of them before, Pirin, and we saw Carlson. This is actually modeled from the Carlson hash function, so from K heavy hash to Carlson, and this is working upon the Carlson hash algorithm. So I'm just going to go quickly through the website and just show you guys what it is. So we have Nexella Network. Project is based on the Casper blockchain, fastest open source, so we all know about that. It's using the Carlson algorithm and launches with a GPU focused fork, tackling some prevalence of ASIC mining operations. Now, I don't know if there's FPGAs on this yet, there probably is, if it's based on the Carlson hash function, just because there was FPGAs on there. I can't necessarily say that for certain, but there might be. I would have liked to have seen them actually improve upon the algorithm in terms of they could have had it like meshed with Blake 3 or something like that. I know that there's a new Casper Classic that's coming out. We might see that meshed with a Blake 3 algorithm just to be more ASIC resistant on that side. So it goes down, it just talks about block DAG and ghost DAG. If we keep going research and development, it's mainly all the things that Casper and all the other Casper forks are trying to fix. So fastest blockchain, I do actually like the design of the website. It's got good UI, this background floating, and nice graphic images here, even though they probably look very AI-ish. However, you know, that doesn't dissuade from mining it. So it says here, uses the optical mining ready N heavy hash. So this is the Carlson one, and then obviously the previous one, which would be K heavy hash. Now, one of the things that I'm skeptical on in terms of all of the Casper forks is the fact that will they be implementing all the Rust rewrites into their development? And speaking down the line, are we going to see these actually, you know, hold some weight in the cryptocurrency space in terms of the GPU mining space? Because right now people are basically mining it for profitability. So the same with Pirin, the same with Carlson. It's just strictly for profits right now. Are we going to see, you know, some sort of ecosystem being formed? We might see it with that new Casper Classic coin, but we'll have to see how that plays out. Also, I'll be showing you guys that on the channel, maybe later on in the week. So let's get into how to mine this. It's a pretty simple setup. If we look here, I'll just show you the profitability that we're kind of working with here. We have on GPUs, profits, all coins, and then the time frame is 24 hours average instead of current because, you know, average gives you a better overall view. We have obviously Nexel AI. So decent profitability, but if you had mined it before the exchange listing, I think you would have been way more profitable. If we keep going down, you can see it's highest profit for pretty much all the top GPUs there, apart from the 3090. And we go down, there's some claw sprinkled in and a bunch of other coins. However, for the most part, a lot of these top end GPUs are gonna be most profitable on this new Casper fork. So let's get into how to mine it. So first thing you wanna do is obviously get a wallet. You can get a web wallet. So let's just go through the process really quickly of this. So create a new wallet. You wanna put in a passcode. You wanna click next. And obviously here you have your seed phrase. So you guys can actually log into this one if you really want to, but I'd say that's probably not the best idea because I'm not gonna be mining into it. And a load of other people might also try to actually get into this wallet. So once you've got the seed phrase marked down, you just go through and you click through. So the third one was arrive. And then the 10th one was forget. And then the first one was priority. And then it says great success. You know, this is, kind of works exactly the same as the Casper web wallet. So as you can see here, here is our address. And we obviously have no transactions. So exactly the same as the Casper wallet, just different colors. So once we have our address, we want to get into the miner. So we're going to be using today LOL miner. I believe that anything that runs on Carlson, as in that has Carlson implemented into the miner, will work as well. So scroll down and you can see lolminer, this version here. I'll leave links to all of these in the description below for you. If we go here, we can actually open up and we want to scroll down until we find the Carlson one because we're working off this algorithm. Let's just edit that one. So right click, edit, more info, run anyway. And it's just going to give us the plain batch file. Now, before we actually enter into any figures, we can just make this a very seamless process. We can go to the pool. So today we're going to be doing hero miners. You can use any other pool. However, hero miners does have worldwide nodes for this. So today we're going to be using Germany, but, but you can use Finland, Canada, 
Brazil, whichever one is closest to you. I believe it does display the closest region to you at the top. And you want to scroll down and find LOL Miner. So these are the miners that are supported for Carlson Coin, SRB Miner, LOL Miner, Regal Miner, and BZ Miner. All you have to do here is copy this, go back to your batch file. Let's go in and replace all of that. So we have LOL Miner, and then it's the Carlson algorithm. The pool that we're mining to, so hero miners, and then the port. And then we want to add in our wallet address. So just go back to the, we click on the wallet, which actually takes us to the explorer. So I don't know why they do that, but we can just copy to clipboard from here. Go back into our batch file and paste it over your wallet address. And then we want to add our worker name. So that's the main basic setup. Now for overclocking. It's the same algorithm as Carlson. So whichever overclocks you used for Carlson, you can use on this coin as well. It was different for Pyrian because I believe that they weren't the same algorithm. However, this one is the same. So, so mining pool stats will give you good overclocks for these. You can alter them a bit as well to push them a little bit further. Instead of clicking on the Nexelia AI, you can actually just go to Carlson because it might display more GPUs in the benchmark section here. So you have the K10. I don't actually believe that this is on the actual network. However, if it is on this new NXL coin, then, you know, we can confirm that they have FPGAs on there. So we have all of the GPUs here. Today, we're actually going to be using a 4060. So if we scroll down and as you can see here, the 4060, so 811 mega hash, we click into it and it's going to give us the overclocks for lol miner. So remember, this is on Carlson, but the same algorithm. So we have the core offset of 300, the core clock at 2490, memory clock obviously at 810, because we're not using any memory on this algorithm, and the power limit at 150. So right here, it actually shows you like what the medium overclock would be. Now you could push these a little bit further, obviously we're not touching the mem clock, but we can also copy these into our batch file. So we just click on the clipboard here, come over to our batch file and paste this in. Now you do also want to add fans because obviously we need to use the fans. So it's just two dashes and then the word fan and whatever percentage we're going to put it at 80% right now. And then I'm actually going to disable one of my devices so that we can actually record us mining on this new coin. Now all we do is click exit so we can save the batch file, go back into our miner file and to actually apply the overclocks, we need to set this as an administrator program. So right click, we go onto properties, and then we click on compatibility and run this program as an administrator. Click apply and then click OK. So let's just rename this quickly to mine NXL there, and it's going to move to here. All you have to do now, double click it and it should start mining. So we click more info, run anyway, and it's going to show up with a Windows Defender pop-up. As you can see there, we've disabled one of our devices. The power limit is actually out the range. So, so 115 to 90 is the actual power limit, but I believe that the 150 has a power limit like of draw on the power of 150. That's probably why they put that there. But the other overclocks are applied. So core clock 300, the locked core clock at 2490, memory clock at 810, fan at 80 and then the power limit is just going to drop it probably to what it normally should be so if we open this up here you can see the average speed we get in is 814 mega hash if we go back to hash rate no we can see here mega hash reported for this medium overclock is 811 with an efficiency of 9.89 and 82 watts being pulled and if we pull up the gpu z we can see here on the sensors for the 4060 now I am having problems still displaying the power for this 4060, I don't know what's wrong. However, if we look here, there is a sensor for it and we're putting 81.4 watts. So we're slightly under 82, but that's probably just a rounding error on hash rate NO. And we're getting around 814 mega hash. So slightly above what is reported on hash rate NO. And I'm sure you can probably push these a little bit further, but for the most part, I would stick to the hash rate NO ones and then just alter them a little bit. The temperatures are relatively good on this. I would expect to have a relatively low temperature because it's a K heavy hash algorithm, which normally is very efficient on GPUs. So the temperature doesn't get too high. It can go from, you know, 40 to 50. That's a good range 
for these algorithms. With other algorithms like Carpow, you would expect it to be a little bit higher and a little bit hotter. So now that you can see it mining, we can actually shut these down and we can bring it back to hash rate. I know we'll just do a quick profitability calculator here. If we go back and we scroll up, we can click on calculator. So the mega hash we were getting was 814. The power that we were getting was 81.4. The minor fee right now, I believe for this is 0 0.75 for lol minor. And then the pool fee, if we check here, I believe, I believe it is 0 0.9. Yes. So 0 0.9, click calculate on 10 cents per kilowatt hour. It's a profit of 12 cents, but this is obviously on a 4060, which isn't really the most profitable GPU to be mining on. As you saw our testing for it on previous videos, it's not really the most powerful or efficient GPU. I just got it because it was at a good price. And you can see here on average, you'll find one block every two days. So if you're into solo mining, I'd probably say around one giga hash, you'd get a block every day and a half, something like that. Now, in terms of looking at your miner, all you have to do is click back to hero miners. And then if we scroll down here, we actually have to enter our address so we can take this back from the Explorer, paste it into the box here. It should show up with our hash rate. Obviously this is only for mining for a couple of minutes. So the hash rate isn't actually shown correctly and it says two valid shares. And then if we scroll down, it'll show us the estimated daily, weekly and monthly profitability. So we have 11 cents there. Weekly is 83 cents and then monthly is $3.59. We have our worker there, the hash rate, one hour, six hour, 24 hours, shares, and then the effort into these recent blocks. I believe that the payout, if we look there, is a minimum of 0.1 NXL, and that can be hit relatively easily within the day, even on a low amount of hash rate, as we can see there. Now, when it comes to the price of this coin, obviously we're mining it for profitability. As we go back to GPUs, it is very profitable right now. There is only one place to sell it, which is on Trade Ogre. This is a relatively good chart as well. Normally you see a massive drop downwards. However, it's actually recovered quite nicely in terms of GPU mining and maybe we'll see this for the next week or two. So I'd say take profitability if you can for, you know, two to three weeks and then roll that into a more stable coin, which you have more faith in, such as Bitcoin. You know, you can roll it into Solana or you can roll it into Casper, whichever thing you want to do just a more stable coin that is going to produce profitability going forward, unless you actually feel like this is going to be the next big coin. And also I do want to mention just because it is on one exchange, I think if it gets listed on other exchanges, I'm having a feeling that Zegex is probably coming along pretty soon and a bunch of other small exchanges are probably coming. That's going to up the price, hopefully. And maybe you should hold on to it for a little bit longer just to see if the price increases just a little bit more. We're currently sitting at around three to four cents in terms of the price. So it dropped down to uh, 1.8 or 1.7 cents down here. And it's kind of trading at around four cents up here. So pretty good in terms of profitability. If you are going to mine it, I'd just be cautious, roll it into something more stable. And hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you had any problems setting up the miner, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to help you out. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.